Praise God, praise God. Greetings to you in listening land today. My, what a privilege the Lord has granted us to come your way and tell you the good news that Jesus loves you. Amen. Well, it is a pleasure and honor to be with you once again to fellowship this evening around the word of God, to see what the spirit of God would say to us. Amen. It's always a blessing and an honor to be able to spend any time in the word of God. Amen. He's always speaking to us. And we want to be in the position and the place to be able to hear what he is speaking. Amen. So thank God to be with you again, once again, this evening. God is good and his goodness is forever. Amen. So we thank God. We just got back from Tulsa ourselves. This <laughs> Man, we had a time, a time in the Lord. Amen. Pastor Regina, God bless you, woman of God. Amen. We had a time in the Lord, if I can say that and say that again, at a time in the Lord and God's goodness prevailed. Amen. And we're just thankful for what was done um, during the time of being there. Amen. We're able to um, give an ordination for our nephew who's been called to the ministry as well, been serving in ministry. Um, and um, Brother Micah, so precious, precious young man. And just thankful for what God is doing in his life and continuing to do in his life. So it was an honor to be a part of that. His dad, such an instrumental part of ministry, instrumental part of the family, you know, as well. I was reminded of a story of his dad, and I didn't share it tonight during his ordination time, but uh, the story of his dad calling himself giving, uh, he was being smart for Christmas, so he's going to give us, give us him for Christmas. Like, oh, for Christmas this year, I'm giving me to you or whatever. So he did that to all of us. And as siblings, we were like, oh, okay, whatever, whatever. But our mom, Mother Tucker, boy, she grabbed a hold of that thing and she she ran with it, wore him out. <laughs> and when I'm giving you me for Christmas. Yes, yeah, she took advantage of it. So we just thank God for that opportunity to be able to, to be a part of that with Precious Micah and just looking forward to what God is doing to him. And then just the uh, the ministry that took place even on the evening. It was just a wonderful move of God. It was um, sort of an afterglow moment of um, just wonderful move of God and just very grateful for the healings and the deliverance and things that took place even during that time. People were baptized. Amen. Thankful for what took place. I appreciate the Elder Apollos jumping in and doing the baptismal uh, that evening. Uh, some cold water in the baptism. Stepped in the water. The water was cold, chill my body, but not my soul water. But uh, uh, Elder A.P. Apollos jumped in and did it. And I'm um, just thankful for what took place there. Uh, amen. That was wonderful, wonderful times. Like I said, I'm just getting back and still floating from that time because it was such a powerful powerful time in the Lord. Um, of course, Sunday morning, um, ministered the word of God as well and thankful for what God did, you know, during that time and just appreciate the opportunity to even plug in, you know, and do anything uh, for the kingdom of God. God's goodness prevails and it prevailed. Amen. Something about God. He shows up when we trust him. He shows up. So we're thankful for what he's done there. Amen. So we thank God for even continuation Sunday school happening every Sunday morning um, at 10 a.m. Amen. Again, appreciate uh, Pastor's mom and dad, Brian. Amen. Being there faithfully. Dudley Sunday school with Elder Rodney. Amen. Appreciate Elder Paul. Again, being a part of Sunday school is a very integral time of ministry as well. And again, um, appreciate the 11, uh, morning service at 1130. Again, appreciate you, Pastor Regina. Just appreciate you. It's always a joy to get time and ministry uh, with the awesome Pastor Regina. She's just such a sweet spirit. Thank God for what God is doing in her life as well. Just so powerful. Um, but um, ministry, um, Sunday, Sunday morning services at 1130 happening. Amen. Lives are being changed, you know, and that's something that we can all be grateful for, that lives are being changed. If God has done anything for us, we are glad about it, amen? And when he brings people in our lives and he allows us to touch others' lives and everything, that's a blessing from him, amen? Sometimes we do things and you don't hear, oh, good job, or out of, out of way, boy, or out of way to go, girl, or whatever. You don't hear those things and all, but you gotta know that God is watching, that God is aware, and what he says 
is what matters. Our obedience to him matters more than anything. So thankful for what's happening in Sunday school, mid-morning service, food ministry is happening on Thursdays and Sundays. Amen. And a continuation Thursdays at 7 and Sundays, immediately following service, food ministry is taking place. Amen. And it's something, no matter what happens, there's still a need. There's still a need. The scriptures say, the poor you'll have with you always. And our mom used to say, well, I guess um, uh, it doesn't have to be the same ones. Amen. I think that was, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm finding out some of the statements that our dear mother made. Sorry, I'm wiping the camera here. Um, our dear mother made, I'm hearing that some other folks have something to do with these sayings that I locked in with mama, you know, and then I'm finding other people said some stuff. So I'm not have to adjust some things and everything to kind of, you know, well, they said it, but mama grabbed a hold of it and all that, you know, I think CE, um, share with mama about God can unscramble eggs. And so I heard mama say it. So, but then I found out past CE is one who shared it with her. Amen. Praise God. And I think, um, don't have to be the same ones. I think Pastor Gina, you shared that with mom or something too, but she took it on. She took it on and made it her own in terms of repeating it and saying it. So, um, so again, we just appreciate what God is doing um, in the house on a consistent basis. I'm just thankful for what, um, you know, it was such a wonderful time of service. The, I was just thinking about the prayers and the just the time of celebration, you know, and things of God is just a wonderful time. Uh, just a wonderful time, and I'm just still floating from uh, that time. It is on Facebook Live. If you are able to go back and check it, I believe it will be on YouTube as well. If you do want to go back and, and check it out, uh, Sister Rachel mentioned uh, this morning that she was scrolling through and ended up seeing some of it as well, amen, in terms of the services that took place. Amen, amen. So thank God for that. But we're grateful for what God is doing. He is truly doing some mighty, mighty mighty things. Amen. Well, praise God. We are continuing, continuing. Amen. Oh, <laughs> okay. Give credit. Pastor, you said give credit to the first, first person you heard it from. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to leave that alone. Glory to God. Um, so praise God. We're going to continue in this time of study. We've been looking at Psalm 119. Amen. And we are almost done with this wonderful book of Psalm or division of Psalm. This has been just a great time of study and all, but we are really at the last stanzas, if you will, of this passage or of Psalms. Um, we got maybe two or three more after this one. So tonight we're looking at Psalm 119. We're looking at verses 145 through 152. Amen. And, um, so we're going to pray, and then we're going to get into the Word of God this evening. Amen. Praise God. Father, right now, thank you for this time tonight. Thank you for your anointing, for your presence that is already here. For you said you never leave nor forsake. Father, thank you right now. These airways have been captured with your anointing, causing burdens to be removed, yokes to be destroyed. God, thank you that after this time together this evening, Father, that we will be changed and we're going from glory to glory, Father. Thank you for souls being saved, lives being healed, souls being set free. We thank you for minds being renewed by your spirit, Father. We thank you for every burden being lifted, Father. In the name of Jesus, think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Have your way, have your way in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So praise God. Well, let's get into this study. I know we are doing like, I don't want to say snippet study, but we were, we're just kind of touching the surface in this time of studying. And also we have, um, we have been getting into this for a period of time. And even what we've been getting into, as I'm seeing by the spirit of God, man, we still are just tapping the surface. You know, um, I know at the beginning I was being an hour, man, I think one time I went an hour and a half and just recognizing that it's so, it's so much in this, the word of God that we can spend the hours and time in it. And we still will have only scratched the surface of what's available in the knowledge and the depth of the word of God. So tonight we're, we're continuing in the study and we're thanking God for what he's doing 
in this time of study, but we're continuing in it and allow the Spirit of God to do what only the Spirit of God can do during this time. So I pray that you're blessed during these times of study in, in Jesus' name. So we're looking at Psalm 119, reading verses 145 through 152. It reads, I cry out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes. I cry out to you, save me, and I will keep your testimonies. I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word. Verse 148, my eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. Verse 149, hear my voice according to your loving kindness. O Lord, revive me according to your justice. Verse 150, they draw near who follow after wickedness. They are far from your law. Verse 151, you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. Verse 152, concerning your testimonies, I have known of old that you have founded them forever. Amen. May God have blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his precious, precious word. Amen. Well, let's get into this time of study. So we know we're in this portion of Psalm 119, and this portion is, is titled Quoth. Q-O-P-H, Q-O-P-H, and it means set apart for a sacred purpose, set apart for a sacred purpose. As we know, each stanza or each section of Psalm 119 begins with the letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And so we've been going through these passages that are beginning with these letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So tonight, the letter that begins this passage is quaff, Q-O-P-H, and it means set apart for a sacred purpose. Set apart for a sacred purpose. Amen. Thank God for being set apart. Amen. So prayerfully, we'll see that even as we're reading through this, these passages of scripture. Amen. So David begins crying out. He says, I cry out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes. In the New Living, it says, I pray with all my heart. Answer me, Lord. I will obey your decrees. King James, it says, I call with my heart, with all my heart. Answer me, O Lord, and I will obey your statutes. I call to you with all my heart. Answer me, O Lord, and I will obey your statutes. That's just the heart of David. And again, we're looking at these passages and we're remembering how David was being known as a man after God's own heart, right? So we will, we can implement some things, as we've said before, implement things from these passages that help us to live better lives. Amen. David is just in this vein of he's just, these are prayers that he prayed. These are, these are things that he expressed during this time of writing. But he says, I call out to you. He says, I call out to you with all my heart, with all my heart. And again, that word heart there means my feelings, my will, my intellect, the center of who I am. He says, I'm crying out to you. I call out to you with all of who I am, with all of who I am. I call out to you. Now, I find it interesting that he didn't say that he called out to his friends. He didn't say he called out to his mother, his father, his sister, and brother. He didn't say that. He says, I call out to you with all my heart. Sometimes we can pour out our heart to people. We're, we're, we're feeling the thing. We're sharing it and we're feeling it and we're feeling very sincere and genuine in the moment of sharing it only to get from the other side of that conversation Oh, oh, okay. Well, get over it. <laughs> no sympathy, no nothing, no nothing at all. But we done poured out our heart in that situation. We poured out our heart because we know God's going to answer. We're looking for some answer from that person. But no, David recognizes who his answer is to come from. And we need to recognize that. We need to remember who our answer comes from. 
We need to recognize who our trust needs to be in regarding everything. He says, I cry out to you with all my heart. Answer me, O Lord, and I will obey your statutes. He says, respond to me, O Lord, and I will obey. I will watch. I will keep. I will be able to guard your statutes. Again, we say statute, something prescribed to you. I'll be able to guard what you have ordered in my life. I will be able to obey what you have placed in my life. And, and look at those statutes also as a type of borders. You know how God has put some borders around us and not only to keep things from coming at us, but to keep us from going past certain things ourselves. Amen. Sometimes we need to remember, don't go past that point. Don't, don't go too far now. Don't stray away too far. You, you get out of sight. You tend to wander in the places that you don't need to be. Amen. If you know you're struggling with something, alcohol and all, you don't need to be hanging around in bars. Amen. That should be a, a prescription for you. That should be a something subscribed to you, a statute for you that you just don't put yourself in certain situations. Amen. If we're prone to overdo certain things, we need to not be put in those situations. We, we, we got to know ourselves. Amen. I tend to not hang around, you know, in terms of alcoholics, um, alcoholic situations and things of that nature. We were talking about this the other day and our, our mother was an adult child of an alcoholic. Her, her dad, our grandfather was an alcoholic. And so one of the driving forces of our dear mother was the fact that she grew up with an alcoholic father. And so she grew up caring for and taking care of him and even even looking out for him and, and, and making sure he was okay, you know, and things. So that drove her and it made her into the person who she was in terms of how God turned it around. But at the same time, I recognize there's a gene there. There's something that happened in that particular DNA that has to be made aware of because I saw it too much in my siblings. There was alcoholism and things that took place. And also in terms of trying, attempting to not go in that direction, if we know ourselves and we know things are prone to be a certain way, I believe God acknowledges us as being wise when we can pay attention to those statutes to those borders, to those things around us that can cause us to go in a direction that we may not need to go. If we just watch our pattern, watch our behavior, and watch what we are doing, amen. Now, I will say this again, the DNA that we were born with, because a lot of us were born with DNA that have faults in them, if you will, amen, faults that cause us to, maybe there's a fault of sickness. Uh, sometimes they say diabetes, runs in the family, you know, uh, bad situations, bad behaviors run in the family, you know, because of that. So let's just be clear about it. Certain DNAs tend to run through families. But let me tell you something. The blood of Jesus has come through and he has made that DNA mean does not apply. Amen. That DNA that you were born with, when you come into the kingdom of God, that DNA does not apply. It does not apply to you in the kingdom of God. Amen. We have to govern ourselves accordingly, but it's not governing ourselves out of fear. It's governing ourselves out of wisdom and living a godly life. Amen. We got a new DNA through Jesus. Ha! I felt that right there. I don't know if you felt it, but I felt that right there. We got a new DNA through Jesus. That DNA says that we are redeemed we are redeemed from the curse of the law. We're redeemed from poverty, sickness, and death. We are redeemed. So we got a new way of living, a new way of being because of the blood of Jesus. Somebody ought to say glory up in here. Amen. So David says, God, I call to you with my heart. Answer me, O Lord, and I will obey your statutes. I'll obey the border that you placed around me. I'll obey the protection that you've given me. I'll obey what you have prescribed 
to me. Amen. I think about those medicines and the, the pills that we're given that says take it three times a day, you know, do this four times a day or take this until better. Amen. We got to get the word of God like that. Well, we, we apply the word of God until the situation's better. If you sick and you dealing with something, you better say every time you can by his stripes, I am healed. Cause let me tell you something. If you ain't saying nothing, the sickness is trying to take over. Amen. So you got to say something to combat that. So that might be three, four, five, six, seven, ten times a day. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed by the stripes of you're establishing something. You're operating in the statutes of God when you put his word on the matter. Amen. If your bank account is low, don't just say, oh, my bank account is low. No, say my God supplies. My God supplies all of my need. Amen. Because if you don't say something, the bank account will keep being low. Amen. The bills will keep coming and being passed due. You got to put something on that. Put the word of God on it to put something in place that can stand up and be a border. Hallelujah. Be a statue. Amen. Be something that has been placed in there to protect you from the attacks of the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless his name. Hallelujah. All right. Let's go on. I'm feeling something right there. Verse 146. It says, I cry out to you, Lord, save me and I will keep your testimonies. He kind of repeats what he said in New Living. He says, I cry out to you, rescue me that I may obey your laws. Cry out to you. And the King James says, I cry out to you, I call to you, save me that I may keep your testimony. So he kind of repeats what he said there in, in verse, in verse 145. Amen. He's just repeating it. God, if, 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 he's, he's like, I'm serious about this, God. I, I'm serious about this. I'm crying out to you. Save me. If you save me, then I can keep your testimonies. I can do what you want me to do if you save me. Amen. If you watch over me, then I can follow what you say. I can be obedient to what you have done. Amen. I can keep your testimonies. I'm calling out to you, God. He is recognizing, he is recognizing his need for God. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm just telling you. Man, some of us are so prideful about recognizing our need for God. I, I'm not going to dare, you know, express a need for anything. No, we better express our need for God. Amen. We need him to keep us. We need him to help us. Amen. We need him to show us how to even walk this thing out in a way that we don't act all uh, flaky. Amen. Glory to God. So David is praying out, crying out, Lord, save me that I may keep your testimonies. Amen. One thing about God, you know, he don't really need you or me to testify for him. God doesn't. No, he doesn't because he can testify for himself. Amen. His word stands alone. Amen. The, the scriptures say that we can deny um, him, but he won't deny himself. <laughs> he, ain't even, he, ain't even, he is not going to deny that he is all powerful God. He's not going to deny that he created heaven and earth. He's not going to deny that he's redeemed our lives from destruction. He's not going to deny his works. Amen. So his works are his testimonies. They already speak. Whether you believe it or not, or whether you acknowledge or not, his testimonies, they already speak. We are breathing because of his testimony that he created us. Hallelujah. Put the breath of life in us. Amen. So we don't need to validate his testimonies. His testimonies stand firm. We just need to agree. Like mama say, agree with the word. Agree with the word. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 147. It reads, I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word. New Living says, I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your word. King James says, I rise before dawn and cry for help. 
In your word, I have put my hope. Hallelujah. There's a consistent language here from David. He's on a mission. Amen. He rises before dawn. And he's again crying out for help again. There, there, I mean, it's three times there that we see him. I call out to you. I cry out to you. I cry out to you. I rise before the morning and I cry for help. He's desperate. Amen. And he's not just desperate in the sense of just, I'm just no, no hope, no nothing. I mean, he was, he was King, King David. Amen. So it wasn't that he had needs in that matter. He recognized his spiritual need was greater than any material blessing that he could ever Receive. He recognized his spiritual need was more important than any power and authority that we could have. That his spiritual need and connection with God was most important. Amen. So he's rising before dawn again, crying out for help. For he recognizes in God's word, in the word of God. In a spoken word of God, that's where he says, I put my hope I'm crying out to you because in your word, I have put my hope. I have placed my hope in your word. I, 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 it's, it's, it's in your word. I, I'm not going to get antsy about this thing because my hope is in your word. My hope is in what you have promised. My hope is in what you have outlaid for me. My hope is in you. Hallelujah. And then he goes on in verse 148. He says, my eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. New Living says, I stay awake through the night thinking about your promise. King James says, my eyes anticipate the watches of the night that I may meditate on your word. My eyes anticipate the watches of the night that I may meditate on your word. I, I love this word that he uses as far as anticipating. You know, it just reminds me of, you know, you're excited about something, you know, excited about something that he's waking up, he's excited about the word of God. He's excited about meditating in the word of God. Some of us do it so mundane and so dry with it. There's no excitement about it. Now we do it, thank God we're doing it, but there's no excitement about it. It's almost like we do it as a bucket list, a checklist. Well, I spent time in the word. I spent time in the word. Amen. Spend time in the word. Or I read the Bible through every year. I read the Bible through every year. Every year I read the Bible. I mean, mama used to say, somebody read the Bible, but it's the Bible reading you. Are you letting the Bible read you? Are you letting the Bible pour into you? Amen. So David is excited. His, there's something in him that says, I anticipate in the watches of the night that I may meditate in your word. And that in the watches of the night, you know, there was a first watch, the second watch, the third watch, the fourth watch. So he said in the watches of the night, he's anticipating that he may meditate in the word, meditate on the word of God. I don't know. What if that was the way that we live? You know, what if we practice that right now? I've been listening to some, 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 uh, some, uh, some, uh, YouTube things and it's not necessarily Christian, but it's talking about doing something for 30 days, right? So what if you anticipated 30 days straight, God's promise is coming true for you? What if you just really got excited about God's promises coming true? Because that's what David is doing here. He said, my eyes anticipate. I'm excited about your promises. I'm excited about being able to meditate in your word. I'm, I'm excited about seeing your promise come to pass. I, I'm excited about being healed. I, I'm excited about being provided for. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about you being my, my way maker, 
my miracle worker. I'm excited about you being my promise keeper. I'm excited about you making a way out of no way. God, I just want to sit back and see how you going to do this. Amen. Because I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this or get past this. But God, I'm just going to sit back and watch how you do it. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to delight myself in you. I'm going to be excited about your promises. Amen. His word does not return void. That's why David says, I meditate on your word. I'm spending time on something that I know works. We spend enough time on stuff that don't work. We try diets that don't work. We try relationships that don't work. Amen. Glory to God. We try a lot of stuff that don't work, but we still keep doing it. You know, we might have had some bad food the other day. You know, might have tried some food that wasn't good at all, just tasted nasty. But we still get up and eat again. Amen. We still eat, but we were looking forward to it. But we still get up and we eat again. And those are things that can be disappointing in the natural, right? But the word of God is something that is never going to disappoint. Amen. There's something about putting your hope in the word and meditating on the word of God. It's a, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Glory to God. <laughs> Pastor Jesus, said, go back to the restaurant. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. One four, verse 149 says, Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. O Lord, revive me according to your justice. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. O Lord, revive me according to your justice. New Living, it says, in your faithful love, O Lord, hear my cry. Let me be revived by following your regulations. Let me be revived. In the King James, it says, hear my voice, O Lord, according to your loving devotion. Give me life according to your justice. David is just, again, this is a, this is a, this is a, a, a sacred time a prayer for David where he's reaching out. His heart is just reaching out to God. He's saying it again. Oh Lord, hear my voice. According to your loving devotion, give me life according to your justice. So he's not saying I'm crying out, but he's saying, hear my voice. Like, okay, I'm crying out. I'm calling out. Hear my voice. Oh Lord, according to your loving devotion. He says, give me life. Give me life. And I was digging into that word life there. And it was really uniquely divided up where it has some different meanings to it. It says that word life there means give me life to revive, to have life, to continue in life, to be able to sustain life. He said, give this to me, Lord. And then it says to be able to live prosperously. Give me life. Give me life. And then another part of it has to do with being quickened, to be revived. Amen. To be quickened from sickness. Hallelujah. Give me life. Quicken me from sickness. Revive me from sickness. And then it goes on to be further broken down from discouragement of the spirit. Revive me from discouragement. Give me life. Revive me. And then it even goes further to say from faintness, from just being tired. This is everything. I just want to give up. Just want to let go. God says, I'm going to revive you. I'm going to quicken you, revive you. And then it says from death, even revive to be quickened and to be revived from death. Hallelujah. Some of us living some dead lives. Ain't no life going on at all. But this passage here says he'll give you life. Amen. Life, revive you. So revive us again, Lord. Revive us again. I know that's why Revival Center House of Prayer, in case you, in case you didn't know, the church's name, Revival Center House of Prayer. And the first part of that word, revival, is revive. 
Amen. So we were always having revivals being revived at Revival Center House of Prayer. <laughs> Amen. And as a result, we saw lives being renewed. Amen. We saw hope restored. We saw bodies healed. Amen. We saw deliverance take place. Amen. So the word of God is true. There was reviving taking place at Revival Center House of Prayer, whereof we are glad. Hallelujah. Amen. But he says, do this, Lord, according to your justice. Give me life according to your justice. Again, that word justice, what you have decreed, what you have placed in law, what you have given as a sentence. Amen. We got to connect with that in a way that says something good to our lives. Amen. That justice is something good for your life. Justice causes the balances to be set right. Amen. Things that might not have been going right. God brings justice to those things. You might have been treated wrong and treated disrespectfully and all. Watch out. God brings justice. Amen. According to his justice, God knows how to set some things in order that have been out of order. He knows. He knows how to do it. Amen. So we just trust him that he will handle that. Now, I know you didn't try it. Amen. You didn't try it. Step back. Step back now. Step back. Take your hands off and let God do it. Amen. Let him bring justice to the matter. We'll never be able to bring the type of justice that God can bring to a matter, no matter how good we think we are. We ain't going to never be able to bring the kind of justice that God can bring to the matter. Amen. And he'll do it and you ain't even got to worry about it. You, next thing you know, it's God, you did that. Go, <laughs> oh, God, you did that. That's a part of David's excitement, waking up in the middle of the night, looking at the promises of God. God, I know you're going to come through on that. God, I know you said, you said you make the crooked places straight. You said you make a way out of no way. You said you perfect that which concerns me. I'm looking forward to your promise, God. We need something to be excited about. Amen. We all need something to be excited about. We got enough drum, drum dumb, all that stuff going on in the world. We got enough of that. We need some stuff to be excited about. So get excited. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God and you stir it up. Stir up some excitement in you. Stir up some life in you. Stir it up about God and his promises. Stir it up and let him show himself strong on our behalf. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 150. It says, they draw near who follow after wickedness. They are far from your law. New Living, it says, lawless people are coming to attack me. They live far from your instruction. King James says, those who follow, those who follow after wickedness draw near. They are far from your law. And you know how that goes. People are coming after you. People coming for you. You know that. You know, you know, you got haters coming after you, people that don't want to see you blessed, that don't want to see you prosper, that don't want to see you get above the situation. They come, you know, they coming out, they coming all the time. They come and they always got something to say. You post something on Facebook, they got something to say negative about, it. oh, that ain't really God. Oh, that don't take all that. Oh, you know, you've been doing that for a long time and ain't nothing really changed for you and all. And you just, so then you, you just embrace the moment because you know, God's got you. The wicked are coming. They coming. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when they come in and putting hateration posts on your posts that you're trying to give God glory and they telling you, well, I tried it, but it didn't work for me. I, I, I tried it, but it didn't work that way for me. Oh, I was believing God and he didn't come through for me. You know, all of those hater, hater talks, those who fall out to witness, who ain't got a plan for God, who have no desire for the things of God. Amen. They follow after wickedness. I was walking with the, one of my coworkers one time and I, I said something about, um, man, you, you know, you might be like one of the thieves that make it in on the, with G, like the man on the cross, the two thieves by Jesus on the cross. You might be one of those that make it in. And I was, you know, messing with them a little bit. But then he said, why would I want to do that? It's going to be more fun down in the other, in the other place. 
I said, oh, let me back up away from you for a minute. Let me make sure lightning bolt don't hit both of us in this moment. But those are the ones that you know, they're following wickedness. They're not even trying to do right. They're not even trying to follow after the things of God. They're going to come for you. They're, they're going to come for you. Amen. Be aware of that and don't be surprised by it. Amen. Don't act like it ain't supposed to happen. It is the word of God. It is what it is. We don't get to live in a bubble. It'd be great if we could just live in a bubble where nobody bothers us. Nothing ever comes, you know, near us to grow us up or anything. That'd be great. But that's not the way it is. People are going to talk about you. People are going to say this about you. People are going to get you upset. It, it's the nature of life. Amen. You're not unspiritual. You're not unsaved. It's just life. Amen. So David is recognizing it. Those who fall after wickedness, draw near. They are far from your law. They ain't even trying to do right. And we pray for them, right? Let's be clear. We do pray for them. We pray for those who are not even uh, trying to follow the things of God, who have an opportunity but never really take advantage of it, who never really um, give their lives to the Lord. And we know people like that, and we know we've got family members in such situations, amen. We all know loved ones, and we all are surrounded by those things. But David is saying, they're around me. They're drawing near. They're not even near your law. They, they're far from your law. They are far from it. And then he goes on and he says, in verse 51, he says, you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. Amen. He says, but you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. In New Living, it says, but you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. And King James says, you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. Amen. There wasn't many variations on, on that particular passage in the New Living Translation as well. But he, he comes back after saying, the wicked, they're, they're around me. They ain't following your word. They're so far from your word. They're not even trying to follow your word. But he comes back and says, but you, O Lord, hallelujah. You are near. Ha! He, he just kind of encourages himself right there with that. He says, they're, they're around me. They're, they're drawing near. They're coming. They're, they're there. Amen. The stuff is there. Amen. I see Ambassador Jan said, the mockers. Yeah, that's it. The mockers. Those that come in that just make fun of and, and say it don't work and all that. They're there. But David comes back and says, but you, you are near. Oh, Lord. And he reassures himself in the things of God. He says, and all your commandments are true. All your commandments are true. He didn't say, I'm sitting there doubting, Lord, I don't know if you're going to come through for me. I don't know about your commandments and all, because, you know, all these people coming after me and all, all these things are happening in my life. I don't know if your word is true. No, David says, all of that's happening. All right. You get the negative doctor's report. You got the negative bank statement, negative, meaning overdrawn. You know, you got all that going on. Amen. You got the relationships that didn't work out. You got all that happening. Things that seem like it's so far from the plan of God for your life. This looks nothing like you imagined it to look in the scriptures. It, your life may not look anything like the word of God has said it would look according to your understanding. It might not look anything like it. But still, you got to come back to this. But you, oh Lord, are near. And all your commandments are true. What do we say? Commandments are what God has said. God said you're healed. Hallelujah. God said he supplied your need. God said you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. God said it. That's his command. And his commands are true. They are stable. They are certain. And they are worthy to be trusted. Amen. They are stable. They are certain. And they're worthy to be trusted. What he said, 
matters. What he said is what we live by. Amen. That makes a difference. It's 152, verse 152 says, concerning your testimonies, I have known of old that you have founded them forever. New Living says, I have known from my earliest days that your laws will last forever. King James says, long ago, I learned from your testimonies that you have established them forever. And this is David recognizing his journey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on now. That when I think about what he has done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. When I think about how he came through for me before, my soul cries out. Well, thank you, Father, for I know you will do it again. When I think about how my body was in pain and how God healed and caused the pain to go away, then I can say, thank you, Father, for I know you will do it again. When I think about how the relationship didn't work out, but then it turned around and it did work out, I can think about that and I can go, God, I thank you for you worked it out. You did it again and you'll do it again. When I think about how I didn't know how the way was going to be made, and then he came and made a way out of no way, then I can say, thank you, Father, but you did it before and you'll do it again. David is remembering. He says, long ago, I learned. I learned. We get to learn some things in this walk. We live long enough. We get to learn some things. We get to learn how God comes through for us. We get to see his hand work in our lives. We get to see his provision manifest in our lives. We get to see him show up with healing in our bodies. We get to see him manifest his glory in our midst where we just sit back and go, wow, God, that was you. Wow, God, I could not have done that without you. Wow, God, how did that happen? That turned around for the good. Hallelujah. We get to see it happen as we live this life. And David is just recognizing that. As long ago, I learned, I learned from your testimonies <laughs> that you have established them forever. Now, David has some testimonies. Amen. He has some testimonies of God, God showing up in his life. He was the one that slew the giant, remember? He was the one that killed the giant with the stone. With the, with the stone. Killed the, killed the giant. Amen. Slew the giant. Amen. He's the one who killed the lion. Amen. David has some testimonies of how he saw the hand of God show up in his life. And I guarantee you, say, we've got the testimonies. Amen. We've got the testimonies of God that have marked our lives. We can all look back on moments of our lives and we say, God, if it had not been for you, I wouldn't have made it through that. Mm, my God, if it had not been for you, I wouldn't have got out of that mess. Oh, God, if it had not been for you, that would not have changed right there. My God, if it had not been for you, I wouldn't be here Today, you have kept me from dangers seen and unseen. So David is recognizing that the testimonies of God, they have been established. What I said earlier, God ain't got to prove nothing to you or me. His testimonies are his testimonies. His word is true. We do good, as the saints say, to grab a hold of it. We do good to believe it. We do good to let it work in our lives. We do good. Our lives are better because of grabbing the hold of what God has said. Do you realize that? Our lives, our quality of life is better because we grab a hold of the promises of God, the testimonies of God that he has established. Our lives are better. God's all right. He ain't missing nothing. He ain't got a light bill due, gas bill too. Babies need a new pair of shoes. Um, baby's sick and all. He ain't got that going on. We do. 
We have things that we have to walk out here on this earth. And we do good in our lives when we allow ourselves to grab a hold of the testimony of God, the words of God, the words that he speaks that gives us hope, that gives us joy, the word that gives us peace, the peace that comes in and just, that peace comes in and slides in all of that chaos. That peace slides in and causes there to be peace in the midst of chaos. That peace that comes in and causes there to be nothing missing and nothing broken. How you thought you were going to feel some kind of way about that situation, but somehow the peace of God has kept you. The peace of God has sustained you. The peace of God has put a mark on your life that cannot be undone. It cannot be erased. The peace of God that has prevailed. His testimonies that have been established forever. They've been set. They've been settled. They've been established forever. Ain't no need of bumping up against the lighthouse, telling the lighthouse to move. Amen. You don't go against the lighthouse, tell the lighthouse to move. The lighthouse is not going to move. The lighthouse has been established. You're going to have to go around the lighthouse. Amen. And sometimes we're trying to change the word of God to fit our circumstance. We're trying to change the word of God to fit our circumstances when we need to change our circumstances to fit the word of God. Amen. We need to change our circumstances to fit the word of God. What does the word say about it? Let me change how I'm behaving to line up with the word. Amen. Let me change how I'm responding so that I can line up with God's word. Let me change how I'm thinking so that I can line up with God's word. Amen. And when I line up with God's word, I'm going to see the results. I'm going to see the promises. I'm going to see the fulfillment of his word happen in our lives. His word is true. Amen. His word is true. His word has been established. It's been established and it's been established forever. His word was there before the beginning and it's going to be there after the end. Amen. The word of God stands forever. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Father, right now, thank you for this time in your word. Thank you for your anointing, for your presence. God, we thank you that your spirit has caused there to be liberty. The word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So Father, thank you right now for the freedom in your spirit right now, causing deliverance to take place. Oh God, thank you. Right now that burdens that have been weighing us down are being removed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, shackles that have bound us are loosed now. In the name of Jesus, shackles of depression, shackles of lack, shackles of sickness, shackles of being unworthy are destroyed now. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for you indeed. You break every fetter. You break every chain. You break every yoke of bondage by your anointing. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your power that is at work. Thank you for your spirit that is flowing freely, Father. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing this prayer request in there from Sister Green, um, Sister Nakia Green, it looks like. Just praying for you right now, you and your daughters. I'm not sure where you're located at, but if you're in the area of the ministry, you're saying you don't have food, there is food available for you. 
So just reach out to the ministry. If you're in the area of the ministry, you reach out. But we're praying peace for you now. In the name of Jesus, we're praying wholeness for you now. In the name of Jesus, we're praying right now that God restores you and that God replenishes you and that he replaces to you the things that were lost, the things that may have been stolen from you, that have been stolen from your spirit to cause even joy to be depleted, that you're restored right now in the precious name of Jesus. And God, I pray that for each one as we pray how your word gives us life, that you're giving us life and you're reviving our souls in you, God, giving us that excitement and that joy, almost like a little child, Father, faith of a little child, just excited about you and what you're doing, God. Restore to us the joy, the joy, the joy of our salvation. Hallelujah. Restore the joy. Restore the joy. Restore the joy, Father. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Father, for bodies being healed right now from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Bodies are healed. Cancer is gone in the name of Jesus. Lupus is healed in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes are open in the name of Jesus. Deaf ears can hear in the name of Jesus. Blood pressure is regulated in the name of Jesus. Heart conditions are healed in the name of Jesus. The healing virtue is flowing right now into every situation. Blood flows freely. Blood flows freely. We come against clogs, come against aneurysms. Go prosta, Cristo. In the name of Jesus, we come against that in the name of Jesus. We say life, life, you will live, you will not die. You will live and you will not die. We thank you, Father, for it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for souls being saved and brought into the kingdom. We thank you for the loved ones, Father. We lift them up in the name of Jesus. We thank you for their souls being saved. You said in your word, you're not willing to any perish, but that all come to repentance. So thank you, Father, for the souls being brought into the kingdom from the north, the south, the east, and the west. You're sending laborers across their past to minister life to them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, thank you. And you're the God who supplies. You supply every need. Father, every need represented here that you're the God who supplies every need. Open doors, open doors of provision that may have been shut. Thank you that they're open now in the name of Jesus. And we declare money is loosed. Money is loosed. Money is loose. There's money that's been tied up. It's loosed now in the name of Jesus. Ekrosta, Krista, Ikorabasete. That's a special word for somebody. There's money that's been tied up somewhere. The Spirit of God is saying it's being loose. It's being loosed. It's being released. Now, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Praise God for his spirit. Praise God for his anointing. Praise God for his presence being here with us this evening. Glory to God. If you desire to give, you can give via cash app at dollar sign MT Ministries. We always want to allow an opportunity to sow in to the ministry. That's why we put that in there as a part of prayer and, 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 and just summarizing because it's an opportunity to sow into the kingdom. And sometimes you need to put a seed on what you've heard. Sometimes. I'm not saying, I ain't trying to be one of them. You need to send $50 in. Because, no, I'm not doing that. You be obedient to what God tells you to do. But I'm saying sometimes you got to put a seed on what you've heard. Amen. Sometimes we're connected to our money. Amen. So you put that money out there, something about that, your heart kind of goes with it. And so you agree with that word and you put that money, that means something connected. Amen. Some, faith is connected to something. Some of us are connected a lot to our money. 
I ain't giving up nothing. But when you give up something, you give it up because you know the Spirit of God is doing something in the midst. Amen. But you can give me a cash out, dollar sign MT Ministries. Glory to God. You can give me a PayPal at info at mothertuckerministries.org. You can give online at www.mothertuckerministries.org. Amen. You can mail in. I mean, we still receive mail. P.O. Box 773, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74101. And again, located at 4505 West 55th Place in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74107. I don't know why I'm giving the zip code because I think I said the wrong one. But Sunday school happening Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Amen. You can avail yourselves that at a wonderful time of study in the word of God. Again, appreciate anyone that does anything. Sunday school is a blessing. Amen. Uh, Mid-morning service, 1130 on Sunday mornings. Amen. Just been such a blessing to the kingdom. Amen. Appreciate it again, Pastor Regina. Appreciate Pastor's mom and dad, Brian. Appreciate Elder Rodney, Elder Apollos. Appreciate uh, uh, Mother Hunt, Mother Aura. Appreciate Sister Tasha. Appreciate uh, Sister Cynthia. Appreciate Mother, uh, I'll just say Mother uh, Tasha. Um, uh, well, anyway, I already said Mother Aura. See, that's what happens. I'm just calling our names. But praise God, each one. God bless Chris, Christina and Sparkle. Amen. Appreciate them as well. Just appreciate anyone who does anything uh, for the kingdom of God. Your labor is not in vain. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Appreciate each one on the line this evening. God bless you for joining in the study this evening. I, I believe I see Ambassador Jan on. I see Pastor Regina on. Appreciate you. Amen. Pastor Regina, appreciate you. Ambassador Jan, just She's just such a powerful woman of God. Amen. Appreciate you, Ambassador Jan. Amen. Appreciate Sister Sandra being on. Sister Rachel, God bless you. Sister Angela coming through. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Rochelle, my precious, precious niece. God bless you. Appreciate you jumping on as well. Uh, Brother Jeremiah Stites, I'm not sure if you're still on, but God bless you, man of God, if you're on as well. Brother Larry Betts came through. As well, Sister Coco came through. That's a good, a good group of people came through this evening. Thank God for, it's like um, um, pa, Patula Dixon, looks like Patula Dixon. Praise God. God bless you. And um, oh my gosh, it's a Diana Belfield Jones came through. Oh my Lord. Now that just brought back some memories there. Brother Belfield and the wonderful man of God that he was to us and just a powerful man in ministry. Uh, to the house, Diana, good to see your name there and everything. Praise God for you. Amen. But God bless you all. Amen. May God's favor shine upon you and his peace be with you until we come together again. Peace and love be multiplied to all. Put some likes there. Show you friendly. God bless you. See you next time.